Wonderful, wonderful hymn of the church. Good morning to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining in with us on this broadcast of the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. We're thankful to God that he has allowed us to gather together again on the second Sunday of the new year. Uh, for those who may not have heard, I still say Happy New Year to you, for it is a blessing to come before you on this morning to share with you a word from the Lord. I want to remind us, to remind all of us to continue in prayer. Continue in prayer not only for our uh, families, our own families, but pray for our church. Pray for our church family. Pray that God will sustain us uh, during this pandemic, during this time that we are uh, meeting still virtually over the airwaves. And also pray with me uh, for the time that God can rejoin us and will rejoin us back together. I miss the fellowship of the saints, and I pray that God will soon bring us back in a safe way uh, into the sanctuary together. We know the writer of the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of the saints. And as soon as is reasonably possible, I'm praying that God will bring us back together again in person. The Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. We need each other. But I, in addition to our, your prayers for other things that are going on, please pray for our church, our church family, and the times that we can rejoin each other. Also, there are a number of our members who are sick or recovering. Some are in the hospitals and some are in the nursing homes. I ask that you would pray for them, that God would lay his hand of comfort upon them. Amen. Amen. Go with us this morning to the 
uh, book of First Kings, the book of First Kings, Old Testament book of First Kings, and there is a word there today that we'd like to share with you. Before we share the word, let's go before God in prayer. Father, it's, it's a blessing to come, uh, to have the opportunity, even the privilege, God, of pe speaking to your people uh, through the words that you have given us. God, I am not worthy to have this opportunity, but by your grace, you have allowed me to be here at this moment, at this time, to share and to expound upon your word. Lord, I don't take this responsibility lightly, but I do ask you, O oh God, that your spirit would enable me now that I might share a word that can comfort, or share a word that will encourage, share a word that will bring glory, not to me, not to Mount Moriah, not to anything else other than God himself, his son Jesus Christ, and his precious Holy Spirit who lives within us. Yes. Now God, I ask that you would prepare the hearts, the minds, and especially the spirits of those of us who are here, those of us who are listening, rather, whether in person or uh, in uh, by technology or on recorded basis. Uh, prepare our hearts, our minds, and especially our spirits, that the word might fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit as you see fit. It's in the name of our Christ. We know him as Jesus. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. First Kings chapter 18, really a rather familiar passage of scripture for a serious Bible students. If you've been in church, if you've heard the word preached on a number of times, I'm surly that you have heard this word before. But God gave me this word uh, uh, the last oh, couple of days. He put this word in my spirit. It replaces something else that I had planned to preach. But because of some of the, uh, the, the, the things that have happened, in this past week because of some of the things that have happened in our nation I believe that God uh, has put this into my spirit and God's people he, he told me needs encouragement in the dark and the dangerous times we need an encouraging word Amen. Uh, you know it's easy for us to sit by our television sets and listen on our computers our cell phones and all we hear is bad news and God made it in my spirit that we need to hear some good, me good news and encouraging word from the word of God. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, and I'll be reading from the King James Version today. Beginning at verse 41, these words are here written. 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning at verse 41 from the King James Version. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. Mm. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he, he said to his servant, Go now, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. Mm. And he said, Go again, go seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he, the servant, said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. It's like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Amen. We'll stop right there. For the purpose of emphasis and for the purpose of a subject of our message today, I want to go back to verse 41, the first, first verse that I read today. Uh, the King James says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And that's what I want to talk about, an abundance of rain. Amen. An abundance of rain of rain. At the time of our text, Israel is in trouble. Of course, the first three kings of Israel, Saul, David, and Solomon, ruled under relative peace. 
Now, those early kings have passed on and many other kings have come to the throne. Also, there has been a civil war in Israel. The northern kingdom, which is generally referred to as Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is generally referred to as Judah, have been at war with each other. So what we have at the time of our text is a divided nation. Does that sound familiar to you? Amen. We have at the time of our text a nation that has been divided. Family against family, brother against brother, community against community, uh, a state against state. It is dealing at the time of our text with a divided nation. Now, in addition to the fact that the nation of Israel is divided, it has also fallen into sin. Nation, uh, the Bible tells us that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Psalm 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. But the same writer in Psalm 32 said these words, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Israel at this point and Judah have both forsaken God. The kings that ruled over Israel, every king, 19 of them during that history, every king that ruled over the northern uh, part of Israel was an evil king. The southern part, Judah, many of its kings, there were 17 kings of the nation of Judah, 19 of uh, the northern kingdom of Israel. Of, of the 17 kingdom uh, kings over the period of time that Judah was separated from its northern partner, there were 17 kings and eight of them were evil. At the time of our lesson, we are dealing with one who was the most evil, and that's King Ahab. If you will read a few chapters before my text, you'll find that Ahab had totally totally wiped out and had rid of Israel of all anything that resembled the God of Israel. And God got tired of it. God decided to bring judgment upon his people. A nation that forgets God, a nation that ignores the word of God, is a nation that will fall into desperate times. And I'm concerned, my brothers and sisters, that we are living in a time we're living in a time where we have a nation that has turned its back, for the most part, on God. There are many, many strong believers and great witnesses of God in this country. But just like Israel, the thing that led Israel astray was their leadership. It was the evil kings. It was the evil leadership. And when you have evil in leadership, I care not what it is, it could be a, a relationship, a marriage, a business, it, a, a state, a community, or a nation. When there is evil leadership, there's going to be problems in the organization. Amen, amen. The thing that had led Israel was their evil leadership, evil kings. Ahab is, as I said, he personified evil during his reign over Israel. But as we enter into getting a better idea of what this text is teaching us. I'll, I'll back up for a couple of chapters, one chapter to, ver to chapter 17. And in chapter 17, we see God beginning to execute his judgment upon Israel because of their sin. Mm -hmm. God chooses a man by the name of Elijah. We know nothing else about Elijah. Verse seven, uh, chapter 17, uh, verse 1 tells us that Elijah the Tishbite, uh, he came on the scene. And God spoke to him and told him to go tell Ahab that judgment time is coming. I want to let you know something, my brothers and sisters. God will not always tolerate evil. At some point, judgment has to come. God is a God of love, but God is also a holy God, and he is a God of love. All right. God chooses, Ahab, chooses Elijah to go to King, evil King Ahab and to tell him, what the judgment upon the country will be. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in chapter 17 
that God tells him to tell Ahab that it will not, that will, shall not be dew nor rain except according to my word. Now that's what Elijah said. Elijah said it will not rain again. This was a bad man. He's an awesome man of God because Elijah looks King Ahab, the evil king, directly in his eyes and say that God's judgment is upon you and as a result of his judgment, result of your evilness, it will not rain, neither will there be dew on the ground for some three years or until I say so. That's Elijah's voice, until I say so. The Bible tells us that God took that invisible key and he locked up the heavens. There was no dew. There was no rain for some three and a half years. Ahab made a promise at that point, a solemn promise, that Elijah should die. But God protected Elijah. God told Elijah, he says, I want you to go down go into hiding. I've got a place for you. I want you to go down uh, by a brook, uh, the brook which is called Cherith. And it shall be that you will drink of the brook. Uh, the brook has still got some water in it. I know it's, it's going to be a while before it rains again, but go down by the brook. I'm going to take care of you while you're down there. I'm going to bring you food. I'm going to send you food and drink in the morning, and I'll send you food and drink in the afternoon. And I'm going to send it, the food and the drink by a raven. Uh -huh. You see, God is preparing for Elijah's miraculous provision. There's just a word there for you, my brothers and sisters. God will provide. It may look sometimes like uh, the way is dark. It may look sometimes like the road is too curvy and too narrow for you uh, to navigate, but God will make a way. God told uh, Elijah, said, go down by the brook. I'll send you food in the morning. I'll send you food in the afternoon. God will provide. But the word tells us at the beginning of chapter 17 that after a while, the brook ran dry. You know, sometimes God will lead you in a direction and it'll be going all good for a while. Everything will be uh, doing real good for a while. But after a while, it seems like that the thing that God had told you to do has turned against you because in Elijah's case, God told him to stay there by the brook. Then the brook dries up. Uh, I know a lot of churches, a lot of pastors who've, uh, who've spoken to me over the years, and they say, they say brother, it seems like uh, the brook the, the flow of the spirit, the, the people attending. It feels like the brook is dried up. And I, I want to encourage them to say the same thing happened to Elijah. But God told Elijah, he said, I made provisions for you. When your brook dries up, God's got somewhere else for you to go. Right. When your brook dries up, God's got a place for you. He's got a place he's going to take care of you. God told Elijah, he says, I made a way. There's a widow down in the city called Zarephath. And I've made provisions for you there. Most of you already know the story. Elijah goes to Zarephath. And he stays at Zarephath during the famine. He stays there with the widow and her son and does performs miracles while he's there. In this woman's house, in the son's life, Elijah provides a, a God's presence in this widow's home. But three and a half years later, God speaks to him and says, it's time for you to go talk to uh, Ahab. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to find Ahab and to tell Ahab uh, that my judgment uh, can be brought to an end if my people will turn from their evil ways. Yeah. The Bible says that uh, Elijah, he through a series of events, he was able to get into the presence of Ahab. And Elijah gave Ahab the message from God. Elijah was, had been wanted uh, by Ahab because Ahab had wanted his death. But God had protected Elijah and God will continue to protect Elijah That's right. as long as, as, as Elijah is obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Elijah goes up to King Ahab and he says it's time for us to stop this foolishness. He said that the people have ignored God and they have began to worship the gods of Baal. He says, I want to have a contest. And we're going to decide, we're going to find out as a result of this contest who the real God is. Uh, Elijah tells Ahab to gather all of your prophets of Baal. 
The Bible tells us that there were 450 prophets of Baal. There were 450 people preaching the ungodly word of an ungodly God. Uh, Elijah told him to meet me on Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a contest there. But this is not going to be any type of just any kind of contest. This is going to be a God, a contest to see who the real God is. All right. As a matter of fact, the way that we're going to decide who the real God is, is that the God that answers by fire is the God that we must serve. All right. The Bible tells us a chapter or two earlier that Elijah got to the mount, to the top of Mount Carmel, along with the 450 prophets of Baal. And Elijah said, how long will you halt between two opinions? In other words, how long will you flutter back and forth, sometimes worshiping the real and true God, and then sometimes worshiping a Baal God? How long will you halt between two opinions? Elijah said, I tell you what, I'm going to allow you to build an altar. He said, both of us will build an altar, and we're going to kill a bull in order to sacrifice on the altar. All right. And I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to let you go first. Build an altar to your false god of Baal. Go ahead and cut the bull up in pieces and put the bull on the altar all right, all as a sign of sacrifice to God. The Bible says that the 450 prophets of Baal, they went to work and they built an altar to the false god of Baal. They built an altar and then they started to dance around the altar. They started to pray to their false god of Baal, wanting and asking the false god of Baal to drop fire down from heaven. The Bible tells us that Elijah just stood off to the side. I believe in my own mind that he was just kind of snickering and wondering how long would they continue to pray yes. to a God that was not real. But they continued to pray all day long. Now, Elijah interrupted at a moment while they were praying and said, hey, maybe your God is on vacation. Maybe your God is asleep. Why don't you even pray harder and maybe he'll hear from you. And the Bible says that those 450 prophets of Baal, they prayed even harder to a God that didn't exist. They even began to cut themselves and, and to put the blood, their own blood on the altar, asking Baal to, to send down fire from heaven. Because in this contest, uh, the God that answered by fire would be the real God. All right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Bible says that toward the afternoon, Finally, Elijah had heard all that he wanted to hear. Elijah said, tear down this altar. And now I'm going to build an altar to the Lord. The Bible says that Elijah got a bull of his own. All right. And he cut the bull up in pieces. And he began to build an altar. Yeah. But now you got to read the text because Elijah made the decision that we're not going to make this thing easy. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this uh, something happen. So that nobody but nobody can deny that it was God and God alone. That's right. The Bible says that he cut the ox, the bull, up into pieces. And then he began to build on the altar, an altar to the Lord. And then he put the bull on top of the altar. But he did not stop there. Mm -hmm. He had those that were around him. He said, now dig a ditch around the altar. He said, and get 12 barrels of water and pour the water all over the altar and pour water in the ditch. Yeah. We're going to make this thing difficult yeah. because when God answers by fire, it's not going to have anything and nobody's going to doubt that my God is the true God. That's right. The Bible says that they cut up the bull. They put the bull on the altar. They dug a trench around the altar then fill the trench with water. And Elijah started praying. Elijah looked up to heaven and said, Now God, I've done what you've asked me to do. Now show who you really are. And the Bible says that God dropped the flame. Dropped the flame down from heaven. Burn up the sacrifice. Burn up the altar. Licked up the water that was in the trenches. And all of the folks said, Elijah's God. He is God. 
And Elijah said, get those prophets of Baal and let's take them down to the brook. And every one of them were, were, were sacrificed there. Every one of them had their heads cut off there because they were worshiping a false god. Right. Because while they were dancing around their altar, they didn't get a flicker. They didn't even get a flame. They didn't get anything from their false god of Baal. But the living and true God dropped a flame that proved who he was. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah. Because of this evilness of this nation, God had had to show who he really was. But now that's not the end of the story. The Bible says that at the point in our text today, the Bible says that after they had slaughtered the prophets of Baal, mm -hmm. in our text verse it says, and Elijah then said to Ahab, you see Ahab had witnessed all of the goings on of the fire coming down from heaven. Ahab had witnessed his own prophets praying to their God of Baal and nothing happened. Ahab had seen everything that Elijah had said and had done. But Elijah then said, told his servant, he says, go tell Ahab that he needs to get up and if he's hungry, he needs to get him something to eat and he needs to get him something to drink. Mm -hmm. Elijah said, because I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. Mm. Now remember, it has not rained for over three years. It's been three and a half years nearly since there was due all rain that fell to the earth. Mm. But Elijah now stands before Ahab and he said, Ahab, even in your evil reign across Israel and across the nation of Judah, God's going to bless his people again. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. All right, all right. You see the abundance of rain that represents God's blessings coming upon his people. An abundance of rain represents God relenting of the judgment that he has had on his people. The abundance of rain shows that God's anger has subsided. That, and he's going to send blessings on his people again. That Elijah told Ahab, said, I don't see it yet, but I hear an abundance of rain. That, in other words, I hear God's blessings that, coming upon his nation of people again. That, I hear God's blessings that, coming upon Judah and Israel again. That, I hear that, a sound of an abundance of rain. That, and that's my message for this nation that we live in today. That I know that we've fallen far from where God's word would have us be. That, but my encouraging word to you today, beloved, that, is that I can hear that, a sound of an abundance of rain. That, I believe that in this year of 2021, that, that God's blessings are returning to our nation. That, I believe that in this year of 2021, that, that God will subside on his judgment, and that, that God's going to clear up the virus that, that has demonstrated his judgment. And that, I believe that, that God's going to allow the rains that, of his blessings to come down upon his people again. That, hallelujah to the Lamb. That, I told you that, that I wanted to give you that, an encouraging word. That, and here is my word. That, rain that represents God's blessings. Yeah. That rain that represents God's spirit. And, that, and I hear that, an abundance of rain. That, the Bible says that, that Elijah told Ahab, that, you better go that, because it's getting ready to rain. That, you better get on home that, because the blessings of God that, are going to fall down on his people. That, but it hadn't rained yet. That there's one more step that, that needed to happen that, for the blessings of God to fall down upon his people. That, the Bible says that, that Elijah went up on Mount Carmel. That, he got to the very top of the mountain that, and he had his servant with him. That, the word of God says, that, and I just read it a few moments ago, that Elijah told his servant, that, he said, go and look toward the sea that, and come back and tell me that, what you see across the ocean. That, the servant came back and that, said, Master, that, I've gone and I've looked that, toward the sea that, and I don't see nothing. 
and uh, Elijah sat down and, uh, on the top of Mount Carmel. And, uh, the Bible says and, uh, he dropped his head between his knees and, uh, and he started praying. Yeah. And, uh, praying for God's blessings and, uh, to fall upon Israel. And, uh, praying for God's blessings and, uh, to fall upon Judah. And, uh, even in their sinful state. And, uh, the God of love still wanted his people and, uh, to enjoy the blessings of God. And, uh, Elijah said, and, uh, it's going to rain. And, uh, I know it. And, uh, I can feel it. And, uh, it's going to rain God's blessings. And, uh, God's going to bless you, bless you and, uh, with healings in your body. And, uh, I hear and, uh, a sound of an abundance of rain. And, uh, God's going to bless you in your finances. And, uh, I hear and, uh, a sound of an abundance of rain. And, uh, God's going to bless you in your home, and, uh, in your relationships, and, uh, in your marriage. And, uh, I hear the, a sound of an abundance of rain. The, Elijah sat down and the, dropped his head between his knees. And, uh, I don't know and, uh, exactly what he said. And, uh, the Bible doesn't tell me and, uh, exactly what prayer he prayed. And, uh, I don't know if he just worshipped God. And, uh, I don't know if he gave God praise and he blessed his name. And, uh, but the Bible says and, uh, that he kept on praying. And, uh, after a while, and, uh, the servant came back and uh, said, Master, I don't see nothing. And, uh, Elijah said, and, uh, go again and, uh, seven times. And, uh, go look and, uh, toward the sea and, uh, and come back and tell me and, uh, what you see. And, uh, on the seventh time, and, uh, the servant came back and, uh, and he told Elijah, and, uh, he said, Master, and, uh, I've gone six times and, uh, and I didn't see nothing. And, uh, there wasn't nothing happening out there. And, uh, but I just went to, and, uh, a seventh time. And, uh, and he says, there's something strange and, uh, coming across the sea. And, uh, he said, I see a cloud. And, uh, it's just a little cloud. And, uh, but it's a cloud and, uh, that looks like a man's hand. Yeah. And, uh, Elijah knew and, uh, that was the same hand and, uh, that had dug out the oceans. And, uh, Elijah knew and, uh, that was the same hand and, uh, that had pushed up the mountains. And, uh, Elijah knew yeah. and, uh, that was the same hand and, uh, that had dropped the flame from heaven and, uh, and burned up the altar, and, uh, licked up the water. And, uh, Burn up the wood. And, uh, Elijah knew and, uh, that it was getting ready to rain. And, uh, I got a message for you, Mount Moriah. And, uh, it's getting ready to rain. And, uh, I got a word for you and, uh, in your finances. And, uh, it's getting ready to rain. And, uh, I got a word for you. And, uh, when your enemy is on top and, uh, and it seems like you're on the bottom. And, uh, I hear, and, uh, I hear, and, uh, I hear. Yeah. Uh, an abundance of rain. Blessings are coming into our church. Blessings are already showing in our church. Blessings are coming in our community. Blessings are coming in your home. If you turn away from the evilness toward the real God of judgment, toward the real God of Israel, toward the real God of Jesus, Toward Jehovah God, and right. if you will turn from your sins, and hallelujah to the Lamb. And God says, and I'll send my blessings. God says, and I'll send the rain. And I'll send healing. And I'll send deliverance. And I'll send happiness. And I'll send joy. And Hallelujah to the Lamb. And, uh, the Bible says and, uh, that Ahab and, uh, started heading home. And, uh, but look at Elijah. And, uh, read the remainder of the chapter. And, uh, Ahab and, uh, was riding in a chariot and, uh, drawn by horses. And, uh, the Bible says and, uh, that Ahab started home. And, uh, but Elijah pulled up his cloak and, uh, and he outran the horses and, uh, that were drawing the chariots. And, uh, and he beat Ahab. That back to the city. That hallelujah to the Lamb. What an awesome God we serve. 
I've got to go. I'm not finished, but I'm going to quit anyway. I just want to leave you with a word. Let me back up for just a moment. The Bible says in Psalm 9 verse 17 that the wicked shall be turned into hell. And every nation that forgets God, our nation has forgotten God. And God's judgment has come down on it. In the, in the way that we've seen in the news, God's judgment has rested upon the United States of America. But I got news for you. If we'll turn from our evil ways, God's blessings will fall upon us. I hear, I hear, I hear a sound of rain. I hear blessings coming upon Mount Moriah. I can see it already. God's already started. I can see ministries that we've already started blessing people right and left. I can see things that God is doing. God has provided finances. Those that stopped giving during the pandemic, you didn't stop God's work. Those that haven't been giving and haven't been tithing during the time that we haven't been in church, God's work has gotten even stronger. Because God is raining blessings upon his people. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Blessed be his name. Blessed is the nation. Blessed is the nation. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. My encouraging word to you today. Rain represents God's blessings. And Mount Moriah and whoever else is listening, in my spirit, I hear a sound. I don't see all of it yet. I may be like Elijah's servant. I see just a, a little bit of it. It's a small cloud right now. But God is sending the rain. He's going to rain on us. If we will not forget him as a church, as a community, as a nation, God will rain on us. I can hear it. Listen. Listen for a moment. Listen in your spirit. Hear the rain. Can you hear the rain? Listen in your spirit for just a moment. I hear it. I hear the sound of God's blessings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless his holy name. All is not lost. God has new things in this new year. God has great things ahead of us in this new year. And if we will keep our eyes on him and focus on his work, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless his name. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, rain on us. Rain on us, O oh God, your blessings. Rain your deliverance, O oh God. Rain your healing upon us, O oh God. Yes, we have sinned. We confess those sins and we ask now that you would forgive us. And we look forward to the rain, to the abundance of rain, the blessings of God upon his people. Father, if there's one who does not know your Savior, I, draw, I pray that you would draw him or her toward you. If there is one who has known you but hasn't felt you in a while, reignite that relationship. I pray in the name of Jesus. And oh God, I pray that you would rain on us. Rain on us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you. May he keep you in our prayer. 
Mount Moriah, to all that may be listening. My word of encouragement to you today is, don't worry. God is in control. And if we will turn away from our evil ways, if we'll fall back and go back toward the, the real God, his blessings will rain on us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you and God keep you as my prayer. Share this message with somebody on your platform. Go, go down to the bottom, just below the, the text, below the picture, and you'll see the, the word share. Share it. There are others that need to know that God's blessings, all is not lost. This new year, we've got a new administration in Washington. We have uh, new people in place. And God's people are ready for something new. I hear the sound. I can hear it. Shh. Listen. Listen. It's the sound of an abundance of rain. God bless you.